Today, we're going to dive into a really fascinating paper that gets right to the heart of a hidden instability in how we build these massive AI models. It's called MHC, Manifold Constraint Hyperconnections, and it offers up a pretty elegant fix to a really risky problem. You know, this one image right here tells you the entire story. On the left, you've got the classic residual connection. It's simple, it's stable, and it's what powered AI for a decade. Then in the middle came this powerful upgrade, hyperconnections, but it had a critical hidden flaw. And on the right, that's the elegant solution from this paper, a new design that's organized, efficient, and just as powerful. So to really get our heads around this breakthrough, we're just gonna walk through the paper step-by-step, step, just like the authors laid it out. We'll start with the intro, see how it fits in with other work, diagnose the problem, check out their method, look at the experiments, and then wrap up with the conclusion. All right, so for more than 10 years, the secret sauce that let AI models get incredibly deep was something called the residual connection. The key feature was this thing called identity mapping. The best way to think of it is like an information superhighway that lets the signal just pass right through all the layers without getting messed up, and that is absolutely key for stable training. But then, a powerful new idea came along. Hyperconnections, or HC. Instead of that simple, clean addition of a standard connection, HC brought in these learnable matrices to really mix up the features and crank up the network's power. But, and this is a big but, it came at a price. It broke that crucial, stable identity mapping property. So, where does an idea like this fit in the grand scheme of AI? Well, you can kind of split AI architecture design into two big buckets. Micro design, that's the guts of the individual building blocks, and macro design, which is all about how you wire those blocks together. This paper, it's all about that big picture macro level wiring. And you can see a really clear evolution in how these networks are designed. We started with ResNet's super stable, simple connections, and then moved to the much more complex wiring of things like DenseNet. Hyperconnections tried to push that even further for more power. But you see the theme, right? The big challenge was that these powerful new designs often threw away the very stability that made deep learning possible in the first place. Okay, so let's get specific. What actually happens when you make that trade-off? when you sacrifice that foundational stability to chase more power, especially when you're training models at a truly massive scale. Well, here's the evidence, plain as day. This graph shows a gigantic 27 billion parameter model training with those hyperconnections. Everything looks like it's going great. The loss is dropping and then, bam, a catastrophic spike. The model's performance just completely collapses. This is what that instability looks like in the wild. So why does it just fall apart like that? The root cause is that the connections are totally unconstrained. As signals pass through the network layer after layer, they get amplified uncontrollably. We're talking peaks of 3,000 times their original strength. It's literally like turning up the volume on a speaker until it just completely blows out. And as if that wasn't bad enough, there's a second really practical problem. All that extra complexity means the amount of data that needs to be read and written from memory just skyrockets. The total I.O. cost explodes and you smash right into a hardware bottleneck that engineers call the memory wall. So the design isn't just unstable, it's also incredibly inefficient. Okay, so we've got an unstable and inefficient design. Let's get to the good part, the solution this paper proposes. It's called Manifold Constrained Hyperconnections, or MHC. And probably the best way to think about it is like adding a set of mathematical guardrails to the system so you can get all the power of hyperconnections with none of the risk. The secret ingredient here is a special mathematical object, a doubly stochastic matrix. Now, I know that sounds super complex, but the concept behind it is just beautiful. It's a matrix where every single row and every single column adds up to exactly one. It basically acts like a perfect mixer. It just redistributes information without ever amplifying it or losing it. And this little mathematical constraint turns out to be the perfect tool for three really important reasons. First, it's norm preserving which is just a fancy way of saying it stops the signals from exploding. Second, it has compositional closure, which guarantees that as you stack more and more layers, the whole system stays stable. And third, it's just a really robust way to fuse and mix information together. So how do they actually do this in practice? They use this clever and surprisingly simple process called the Sinkhorn Knopp algorithm. You just start with your unstable matrix, make all its numbers positive, and then you repeat the simple two-step dance. Scale all the rows so they add up to one, then scale all the columns so they add up to one. You just do that over and over until the matrix settles into that perfect, well-behaved mix. 
Now you're probably thinking, okay, adding all this extra math must really slow things down. But, and this is the amazing part, thanks to some seriously clever engineering, things like fusing operations together and recomputing values on the fly, the added training time is just 6.7%. That is a tiny, tiny price to pay for getting both stability and power. All right, so the theory is elegant, it's efficient, it sounds great, but does it actually work? Let's move on and see what happened when they put MHC to the test in some massive experiments. And here it is, the payoff. This is that same 27 billion parameter model, but this time it's trained with the MHC guardrails in place. Just look at that training curve. It is perfectly stable. It completely avoids that catastrophic spike we saw before, and it even ends up at a better, lower final loss than the original baseline model. It just works. And that improved stability isn't just for show. It leads directly to better performance. On several key AI reasoning benchmarks, you can see MHAC doesn't just beat the baseline. It consistently outperforms the original, unstable HOAC model. The takeaway here is crystal clear. Better stability leads to a smarter model. This slide shows us exactly why it works. Remember that crazy signal amplification that was spiking up to 3,000 times? Well, with MHC, it's completely under control, staying safely bounded right around 1.6. That's a reduction of three orders of magnitude. The core problem has been definitively solved. So let's just zoom out for a second and think about the big picture here. What's the real significance of this research? Why does this actually matter for the future of AI? The authors of the paper sum it up perfectly. They say that MHC restores the identity mapping property, enabling stable large-scale training with superior scalability. And that is the absolute key. This isn't just a clever trick. It's a practical blueprint for how we can build the next generation of AI to be even more powerful, but also fundamentally stable and reliable. What's so cool is that this work used a principle from geometry to bring stability and power to AI. And that leaves us with a final, really fascinating question to think about. If a concept from geometry holds a key like this, what other fundamental principles from deep mathematics are just waiting out there to unlock the next great leap forward for foundational models?